I want to introduce Thomas. Thomas Putzier is a is a queer Minneapolis-based conceptual artist and designer. He's been really fun to work with. He's actually quite charming, if I don't say so myself. And um, instead of me kind of rolling through his resume, I talked to Thomas about this a little bit before. Um, I'm going to let him kind of pick and choose what he wants to talk about with his career. Hi, Thomas. Welcome to our online gallery talk. Happy to have you here. Yay. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. And I'm first going to speak about this black sculpture and it's titled um, Safety Station Number One. And this comes from a, a series of drawings I made of what I would call like gateways. Um, I was also sort of thinking about these giant um, war memorials. I think these are in Yugoslavia. So this sculpture is sort of a pop-up sculpture and I installed it in a number of different places. And I really sort of thought of it, I think of it as sculpture, I also think of it as non-functional architecture. I've made a number of different videos in the past using architecture as a character element in a video, as a gateway to another place or um, as a character itself that negotiates with other characters. But so when I say this is non-functioning and I call it a safety station, it's like, you know, I human life is so fragile and I'm looking for somewhere to run to and I build this thing and it, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't save me, but, you know, becomes a sort of, you know, wayfinder device or a place for dialogue. Um, so this is it in the gallery. And there's nine columns, obviously it's very industrial. Um, and they're just sauna tubes. It's very simple. And they're, they're built off of a nine square idea, um, which is a methodology in architecture people sort of use and play off of. This is kind of, it's like almost a large scale didactic. It's a painting on raw canvas and thinking about it as a gateway, I'm kind of like, well, what, what do I need? It's sort of a point in the universe. I cross out earth. I'm always, you know, I love to zoom out and think about, you know, we're America, we're all so individualized and we, we're not thinking about the rest of the world. And I'm always, you know, like, there's so much, so many videos by NASA where we're just kind of zooming out through space and I see those and I kind of want to throw up and it makes me feel so small and irrelevant. And so I cross out Earth because there's so much more going on. So then this, um, this will be the other work I'll talk about in the gallery. Um, I've called it so many different things. I guess the title doesn't matter. I made this in 2013, 2014 after leaving Chicago and um, it felt very on edge in Chicago. And this this painting sort of is like almost urban sprawl ending or like we're going from the top left to the bottom right, going through, you know, this dense area going out into the farmland sort of. And I'm someone who's constantly drawing shapes and kind of creating catalogs to build off of in the future. I think the interesting thing with this painting in 2013, the top, like the third character in the row, it, you can't really see it, but that becomes this one of the pink sculptures in the gallery.
Okay, now I'll talk about the three pink paintings. Um, these are titled Bewildered Herd, a series of three paintings depicting a continuous world which could be perceived as a singular section cut view of a building or as an image of multiple structures set in parallel perspective even though the interior lines negate unit singularity. The works are a conglomeration, complication, and contradiction of historical reference, industrial figures, pareidolia, which is sort of like seeing faces and things like that in, you know, in our surroundings and architecture. And then the iconography of power, which, you know, if we think about the visual cleanse, in the beginning, there was a lot of imageries from sort of the after effects of war or mining extraction and a lot of labor, food, industry, also human progress. So I use a lot of that iconography and the design work that I'm doing because I think that's symbolism we're all um, familiar with. Okay, so I mean, every painting, every project I'm doing has all these references. These are, I think, the only two I'm showing. I might be showing two others. But um, this is first a movie from George Lewis called THX 1136, I think it's called. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty cool. I would recommend watching it. Um, but what really interests me about that movie is the whole thing shot kind of like in this continuous environment and there's really never an exterior. There's all, you're, they're always inside. There's and there is this sort of social conditioning of the body happening via other people but also i think about with these paintings specifically i'm really thinking about you know how can how can um architecture act as a, a means of social engineering so a lot of my drawing work begins just like drawing flow chart and what where do people go and what are some of the icons that i want to sneak in there what are the, some of the symbolism what are some of the interactions I'm creating? Um, and I'm constantly drawing. I think getting ideas out as often as you can is really important. I have a lot of things constantly stuck in my head. And it's interesting. I, I disregard drawing so much and I scatter it everywhere. And then I'm constantly running around the studio looking for something that I drew. So I'm, I'm trying to respect myself more and respect the drawing process more. And I know it's something I need to get better at, just respecting all the parts of my practice. Um, but so I'll just draw, I'll just sit there and draw tons and tons of shapes. And what I'm really interested in is, again, okay, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm interested in specific sort of line segments. You know, I'll just draw a page after page after page and look at it and, you know, what, what excites me, what line segments are telling the story that, or the idea that I'm looking to convey at that moment. And then I'll kind of just come back with the light table and add them all together and create something new and weird off of, um, you know, symbolism and iconography that we're originally familiar with. Um, and, you know, I don't even know what this is, but it, it looks cool. The first painting and I don't think I'll really interpret it that much for you, but like you can see some fun faces. Um, I will say the work is on raw canvas. It's not gessoed, it's not sanded. The paint is applied. I'm not a painter. I don't have, identify as a painter. I've never taken a single painting class. I'm using house paints that are old and rusty and um, they're actually from the sculpture I made at Franconia. There, I had so much leftover pink paint and it's like, okay, I'm gonna use pink now. And yeah, I, there's so much going on and there's things leading and, you know, interrupting each other. I think there's like factory symbolism going on, iconography of progress.
This is the second one. It leads into leads from this one into this one. And this is the third painting. Um, I'm not really talking about references at all, but like this. And then on the right, they all, these are, I'll just be honest, these are all drop cloths. I'm a poor person and I buy the cheapest materials. I'm looking to get the idea out. I'm not, I don't have the means to you know, buy really expensive canvases that my friends have sent me and said, you need to use this canvas. And it's like, well, let's just use things laying around my house. And so there's this seam and I almost feel like this seam, this seam is like the politics of poverty and thinking about you know where I am and getting, you know, it's just like use what you have and get it out. I used to constantly wait for someone to tell me to do it. And it's like, just do it and do it on whatever you have and it'll be great. And oh, the thing I was gonna say about the raw canvas, um, you know, like that piece at Franconia, creating that tension, the tension is holding it, what it's all together. Every single line, every other line is raw canvas. And so each painted line, you know, a canvas, as you know, is stretched, it's pulled. It's constantly a tension with itself to hold itself together. And these, you know, a conservator would hate me. This, these, um, this raw canvas is just, everything's pulling, apart sort of and i'm not really helping the life of the painting by doing this but i really like the tension that it's that it creates and like i don't know if you can see here but it's the the texture is really rough which i just love i don't know what i'm doing as a painter but i think it's i like it a lot and it's kind of almost like drawing but on canvas
And um, now I'll end with talking about the sculptures, which are called Occupations of Inhabited Space, which is um, a title I stole from a line in a book by Ursula again, The Dispossessed. Um, and I kind of changed the title, but when I was at a reg residency in California, near Truckee, it's called Sage Hen Creek, Sage Hen Creek Field Station, I believe. Um, I was really thinking about more life-sized architecture that we could sort of encounter in an environment, almost like a new species or something. And let's see, I was really thinking about, like, this is a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica. And I was kind of thinking about, like, this eye, the eye hole is really similar to Blake Corbusier's Villa Savoy. Zilla, Zilla, Villa Savoy and this ribbon window is almost this eye opening and how can I incorporate that and take that into my paintings? I was really thinking about this new sort of surveillance that's coming out everywhere and oh like that Boston Dynamics robot dog. And this is also from the video rune country I talked about earlier but really thinking about um, data and how everything we're doing is being collected and we're you know constantly being watched and so what if there was this sort of architectural presence that was doing this labor and maybe they they all serve different functions or something so this was just this sketch on the bottom of a trap or a bottom of a grocery bag i did at that residency it was like these things popped in my head i'm like okay they look like this and then then I made these while I was, or afterward, and they were, they're actually video stills from moving videos where the architecture kind of stood on top of it. Um, this was the sort of first drawing set I made of these sculptures. And then it kind of turned into this ongoing series and I just started drawing more and more cute little architectures that I could like be friends with or could follow me or protect me or I don't know, come yell at me or tell me I look good or something. And this is, so I always kind of start with like a single image and then abstract from there and turn into three dimensions. And I'm really always thinking about kind of jamming just different geometry together that excites me. Also, like I said earlier, kind of injecting personality and character using character as like a development for geometry uh, what is you know these, these they each have such a different you know emotion or presence to them and it feels like they each have a different function so that's a shot of the three of them here's a shot of the green one and the pink one <laughs> And I feel like one day I'll name them, but right now I'm just numbering them. I'm really obsessed with the blue one. I don't know if you can tell, but I just, each side of it just is so exciting to me and tells me something new. And I look at this one and I really think about, um, you know, like the body politics and gender politics and all the social expectations people 
experience um, on a day to day as a as a being in an organic body. And I think about kind of translating that experience as a human into architecture and letting it live out and express things. I'm also very interested in autonomy, if that makes sense. Letting these people, these things be autonomous.
I just want to say thank you to everyone who came. This was so fun and so exciting, and I'm so thankful you could come. And I loved sharing, and I hope it was fun for you. And please have a good, relaxing night. <laughs>